So we've been talking about this a lot, just how much strain is on grids around the world. Is it ready for these net zero ambitions? Unfortunately, the answer to that question is no. And, and there's some regional variation because these grids are fundamentally planned and funded at a regional or national level. But wherever we happen to look, we find kind of the common picture, which is an electricity grid that is strained and underdeveloped for a net zero world. One barometer that we use to gauge this is the size of interconnection queues, and we have some data here to show that. And these are basically queues that renewable energy projects have to sit and wait in before they can connect to the electricity grid. Yeah. In the UK, hundreds of gigawatts. In Italy, hundreds of gigawatts. Business as usual just doesn't seem to be cutting it. What changes that, though? How do we get the grid up to speed? How do we increase that kind of capacity? Fundamentally, this is about returning to building out the electricity grid. Um, if we look at the last decade in Europe, we've doubled the amount of renewable energy capacity. But over that same time, time span, there's only been a 6% increase in the length of the transmission grid. Looking forward for a net zero world, we see an electricity grid that needs to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 3% per year, out to 152 million kilometers. That happens to be the distance from the Earth to the Sun. And as daunting as that may seem, this is a build project that we have seen happen before in history. It's happened in Europe. It's happened in the U.S. We just need to return back to that level of build that we once had before. But when you're talking about easing some of these constraints, as you pointed out, you're talking about the build. Walk us through specifically how, from a fiscal standpoint, countries can get ahead of this. What exactly do they need to be building? Uh, so they need to be building out the electricity grid. They also need to be enhancing the way the electricity grid is operating that's there today. If you think about for the near term, what we need to do is actually make best use of the infrastructure that's there. So one specific segment that I'm looking at is the, uh, the demand side flexibility technology. So these are ways that we can do this without having a significant fiscal impact. And this allows us to use resources that are already scattered within the community, so electric vehicles, um, storage assets. And we have some data to show what that might actually look like in Germany. So we see a substantial scale up all the way out to 2030. And that allows us to use those infrastructures to solve grid congestion and not have to build as much infrastructure in the short run. But that is a short-term problem, and this is you're talking about a massive infrastructure hall. That is expensive. That is time-consuming. How are countries being creative, working around the problem in the short term? Um, yeah, so the, the, the creativity comes in, in, in the best utilization. So there's di very digital technologies that we can use to make sure that the infrastructure that we have is being fully utilized. So here we're talking about things that allow uh, a, a transmission line to be 100% utilized as opposed to making conservative assumptions about what its capability would be in any given hour. Um, creating marketplaces that allow us to use the capacity that are, is scattered around the electricity grid and make sure that we are having prices that are reflective of the actual congestion that's happening in the system. It's a really interesting dynamic. I'll, I'll leave you with one quick question, though. When, in terms of pricing, are we concerned about some sort of read-through into consumers of, of that product? Yeah, so there's a rate impact to all of this, right? So the, the substantial capital expenditures that we're going to have to see in the electricity grid is going to have a rate impact. And so the, the, the pace at which we can really scale this out is going to be dictated fundamentally by what consumers can absorb. And so we need to keep that in mind as we, we build up the system. Yeah, a really interesting dynamic and one that feels like is adding a lot of pressure to both state and international governments. Um, we thank you so much for that crucial analysis. Sanjeev Sangara there, the head of grids and utilities over at Bloomberg NEF.